Hi YouTube friends, Brad Silverline in Daydream. So we finally did it. We finished our bathroom remodel. So in this video, we're going to have our total bathroom makeover. We're going to show you our bathroom renovation from start to finish. You're going to see before and after pictures. And I organized it such that I think there'll be some entertainment value. And whether or not you're going to do a DIY in a bathroom yourself, or you're going to hire this out, I really think you're going to glean some information. And if anything, you're just going to have a great time. So be sure to subscribe, give us a like, and without further ado, let's get started. You don't want to be in a hurry, you just want to jiggle and rock the sheet of tile until it eventually comes off. You want to take your time and be cautious, you don't want to bleed out during this project. While we were doing the demo, I found something here. Let me show you. A Blatt's beer bottle. And one more thing, and this is a good time to talk about this. So even if you don't do your own bathroom remodel, it's important to understand the process. You're gonna to wanna to just watch them along the way and make sure they don't cut corners. I can't believe it. See how all this giggles? So every time we take a shower, this would always drive me nuts. This would come off, basically, and move around. So I'm going to jiggle the shower head. Oh my word. So you can see those nails and the strap, all the noise that would vibrate them up. So to fix these fasteners, I'm just using these little metal screws and I put some doubled up electrical tape there just to cut some of the vibration. And uh, so it's questionable whether or not you can put metal on the um, copper. And I think this is fine. Get that tight. I Looks like the electrical tape staying there somewhat. I'm shaking the shower head and that really tightened it up. We're gonna really make this place quieter, I hope. Maybe that'll make that stop vibrating right there. There, it's pinned down real good, real tight. And there you can see where I got insulation, where it's touching, and I've got it clamped down real tight there. Can't find my big stapler. Just let me stuff it up there pretty good. I decided to actually add a scab. This is under the faucet. So I just put some blocking here. And uh, because of the copper piping, a two by four wouldn't fit. So this is kind of narrow. It's like, I think a half an inch, but it gives it some support. Can you help me hold this, babe? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're good. Perfect. So they recommend that you sink these screws just flush with the outside of the cement board. All right, so this is two inch non-alkali mesh tape. It's made specifically for cement boards and it's adhesive on the one side. So we're just gonna put that on. You wanna make sure all your cement board joints have cement board tape on them. about if this tile will stick to the wall. 
Don't worry because <laughs> I can barely move it. Uh, perpendicular movement to this combing. Gonna make sure I have enough gap. I'm sure if you've done this before, you'll be a lot less messy. But uh, you know, I'm learning as I go and I'm not afraid to try it. So if I can do this, you can do it. So I should get this up to my line. Now I know my wall goes in back this way more. So I'm gonna butter this a little bit more. The mortar is creamier. This is more how it should be. The first bro I think was too dry. I have to butter it up because the wall's off here. I'm getting the haze off, and as I'm doing this, the tile's getting slipperier. Smooth, and again, you can tell there's a haze here because it's a little rougher. And I can actually see this haze. Tile is timeless, and it's gonna look just fantastic when it's done, I think. Even with a little bit of lipping here and there, and it's not perfect, but it's a little bit random throughout it, they're gonna come in here and you're gonna say, wow, that looks great. Now, if you set tile, you're going to start seeing some things here and there. Um, but when you look at the savings, overall, I'm glad that I did this. Cold water, extra paper towels, let a little bit of caulk run out. are a little bit chipped down there so I'm going to try to cover that with more caulk. I should have probably put tape up on the top. I think I will before I do any more. This is all silicone but it feels different than the, the normal silicone I work with. Until I, until I know I will, yeah I will go with you. Alright, so you want to apply this, you can use a brush or a sponge, and you want to get it in the grout lines, and just get, just apply it. Can you look at what time it is? Because you want to wipe it off within five minutes. And you see it's dripping all over, I got too much. So I'm just doing everything, I'm doing the tiles. It does leave a little bit of a haze. Excuse me, it does leave just a little bit of a shine on the tile, which I'm okay with. But uh, it'll probably just wash off because it's glazed tile. That's what they, they, so they say, but it's actually staying on there a little bit. So I'm getting everything. To be honest, I don't really know if any of it's going to stay on the tile. It's a glazed porcelain tile, like I mentioned, but it's actually staying on there after I wipe it like a little layer and it looks fine. You can smell it. Here's where I got some lipping. Supposed to wipe it off within five minutes so you don't leave a, um, a film on the tile. So my tile's a little waterproof now, I guess. You can see how there's mold in there and the wall's kind of breaking away.
After an 11% rebate, the cost for the Birch Butcher Block counter was $195.79, and the clearance price for the above counter sink was reduced from $175 to $75. Earlier in the day my jigsaw broke, so I ended up doing the sink cutout with my circular saw, my drill, and my dremel. Number 20 sandpaper. For the stain we paid $7.96 and it has a 2 hour dry time. We waited a full day before applying the varnish. The butcher block must be sealed or finished on all surfaces within 48 hours of removing the shrink wrap. If you were using this countertop in your kitchen and you planned on prepping food on it, you would use something else to seal it, mineral oil or some other conditioner. If we were installing this in our kitchen, we would still use a cutting board just to protect our countertop. For the oil-based varnish, we paid $10.48 for a quart. The manufacturer states it has a 6 hour dry time and they recommend a minimum of three coats. We put on three coats and after the first coat we very, very, very lightly sanded with a 220 sandpaper. The oil-based poly versus the water-based poly gives a slight golden hue to your project. Some people are okay with that, others aren't. We felt that the oil-based poly would have a greater affinity over time for the wood versus the water-based poly. So here I'm just using a 100 grit sandpaper just to kind of lightly sand this up here before we put the primer on. Last night we used the liquid sandpaper made by Clean Strip on our bathroom cabinets. And I'm not sure if it just doesn't work very well or if our cabinets just didn't have a whole lot of gloss on them anymore because of all the cleaning that we've done over the years. So um, just to be on the safe side, what we decided to do was just use a 150 grit sandpaper to uh, just lightly sand it just to make sure that everything is off of it really nice thin coats of the primer. After removing the shims on here I scraped off all the adhesive. And we're going to create some new shims and put those on before the countertop goes on. We let the first coat of primer dry overnight. If you've watched our channel before and you've seen our painting kitchen cabinets white video you know that we like to let paint dry overnight with each coat even though the dry time is an hour on this. We feel that it just hardens better. So you can see where I just filled this in with spackle. I'm gonna just lightly sand it. Turn it around. It took two coats and I sanded it. It looks pretty good. If we were painting this cabinet white, we would definitely use two coats of primer, but because we're painting it a navy blue, we only need to use one coat of primer. Here I am painting the walls with primer. I bought this fuse at Liquid Nails. It says it's for all surfaces, including most plastics. So we're just going to put some silicone caulk on here. It doesn't take too much. We're putting a countertop on. Okay, Oma, and then we got to kind of set it on. Are you able to kind of set it very gently at the back? You got it? Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Will she go back? She might. Uh, okay. What do you think? Isn't that beautiful? But I can fit right through that. <laughs> you could. It can get okay. a little crazy in here. Yeah. So these cabinet drawer faces and also the door here have been curing for a couple weeks so now they can be handled. I'm going to put the hardware on.
All right, so we just want to make sure it's straight on here, and we'll just tighten up this nut now. I like the fit though. Thanks. Oh, I'm getting pretty cold. Is that okay if I go get a blanket? Sure. Okay. water for 15 seconds and you're supposed to run the hot water for 15 seconds. So now I'm supposed to put the aerator back in and then tighten it back up. There it's tight. We're going to show you how we use leftover wood from our wood countertop. I don't want too much varnish on. I don't want it to drip to the underside. We're going to use two shells instead of three, we decided now. I have a stud here and in the corner, so I think we're going to have to go with this style. The shelf is about 6 pounds and this set is supposed to hold 30 pounds. If this is adhering to the wall with adhesive back here, this is hitting that wall, this won't be able to teeter. I think this will be okay. Where the counter meets the wall, I use silicone caulk to attach the butcher block trim. We love how these wooden shelves tie in with the countertop, are functional, and pop against these white walls, giving it an open and spacious vibe to our bathroom. Okay, we'll just tighten it up with the Allen wrench here. Functional. Here's what it looks like with the towel on. I think it looks really good. This is like 60 years old. You can see how easily this comes off. If needed, a person could pay someone about $45 to glaze these windows, or you could do it yourself for less. It would cost us about $700 to pay someone to install a new window. Some companies won't even come out just to install one window. You have to do multiple windows, or if it's just one window, they have a markup fee. It could be even more than 700s. By spending three or four hours with the labor spread out, we're going to resurrect these windows for nearly no cost. So we painted these with two coats of primer and two top coats and then some caulk down there. So this is a hack using a razor blade to cut the tape right where it meets the window so you don't peel back paint on the window itself. I mean, nothing's going to look like a new window, but if we can salvage this and get by without spending the money, it's worth a try. Here I'm installing the new window locking hardware which cost only $2.26.
this is just sort of a temporary hack to get us by for a while before we have to replace the window. Oh, no, no, no. 